as of now, I believe there's only two Fujifilm cameras which have officially access to the entire lineup of uh, 18 film simulations engineered by Fuji. And the thing is, instead of waiting for Fuji to update their older cameras with the new film simulations, which may never happen actually, and unless you're an exclusive JPEG shooter, with the right tools you can access all of those 18 film simulations on most Fujifilm cameras. And the files look great, it works on Windows, it works on Mac, and it's really easy. So I'll be covering two processing softwares through which you can do this, Capture One and Adobe Lightroom. Now before we start, I have to say that this does not work with the original X100 camera, the one which came out in 2010. And if you have X-mount bear sensor cameras, such as the X-T200, X-T100, X-A7 or X-A series in general, um, you will have to use Lightroom because the process I'm using in Capture One to access the, the film simulations does not work. Uh, with bio sensor cameras, X mount bio sensor cameras. It works on the GFX line, on the GFX 100, but that's a medium format camera. Speaking of Lightroom, uh, as you can see, the video is in two parts. I will be starting with Capture One, so uh, Lightroom users can skip this part and jump ahead. So, Capture One. There are two ways to go about this in Capture One. The first way, which in my opinion is better, consists of going into a folder which contains Capture One's profiles, the film simulation profiles, and to modify a set of files so that every time you load the program uh, and you load the files, you will have the desired film simulation available with the other uh, already available film simulations. Problem is that this technique only works with uh, X-Trans 3 and 4 cameras, which are listed on the screen right now. Uh, before we start, let me have a few words on how this works and uh, why we can do this. In a nutshell, uh, the RAW files we'll be working with actually don't contain any film simulation. It's actually the RAW converter which does. And the way it works is Capture One applies profiles it created in-house, allegedly in conjunction with Fujifilm, to the RAW file. So those profiles are simulations of the Fuji film simulations. You, you can't actually distinguish a difference between the two, but that gives us a possibility to access those files, those files uh, which are stored in the Capture One directory. Okay, so let's get to the meat of it. This, by the way, works also with the Express version. So you need to find the drive where your um, Capture One is installed. In my case, it's the, it's the C drive. Then you go to Program Files. Uh, you find the Capture One folder. You click through Capture One 20. You, you click through and you find Film Curves. At this point, uh, you will find a bunch of files. Be careful to not uh, erase any. At this point, you're going to have to navigate through the directory and uh, find uh, the Fuji files, okay? And this is where it gets a bit tricky, but not too much. Okay, so you need to know if your camera has 24 or 26 megapixels. Because if it has 24, it has an X trans 3 sensor. And if it has 26 megapixels, it has an X trans 4 sensor. And this is important because when you look at the files, the P1X files and the VCRV files, the way the folder is set up is that uh, film simulations are managed by 10 files, okay? One VCRV file and nine P1X files. And it seems there's always one camera in each sensor generation which manages the P1X files and then each camera model has its own VCRV file. Let's say you want Classic Negative on your X-Pro2. Now, Classic Negative was uh, introduced, I believe, on the X-Pro3. So you will have to look in the X-Trans 4 family of cameras. First of all, you will have to find the P1X files, which are managed by the X-T3. You will find them under the abbreviation CN. There are nine files, so make sure you copy them to a folder somewhere. It can be on your desktop, it can be anywhere. Uh, just make sure you do not move the files, you just uh, copy and paste them somewhere. And then you will have also to find a uh, .vcrv file for the classic negative uh, film simulation. So you'll have to find a camera in the X-Trans 4 generation which has it. So I think the X-T3 has it, the X-Pro2, 
X Pro 3, sorry, the X100V and the X-T4. Uh, any will do, they're all the same. Uh, again, copy the file and paste it in the same directory. At this point, you will have to rename the files. So, since the X-Pro2 is an X-Trans 3 camera, the P1X files will have to be renamed XH1 and the VCRV file will have to be renamed X-Pro2. You need to uh, make sure the, um, everything is written the same way as you see on the screen. You can't put uh, a small X or, or, a, or a dash after the X, no, it, it needs to be exactly written the same way, otherwise Capture One will not recognize the, the files. So once you have uh, renamed everything, you pull the files from the directory, from the folder you put them in, okay? And you put them back in the um, Capture One directory from where you copied them. So you need to make sure, again, the 10 files, or so the 9 P1X files and the 1 VCRV file go back into the, um, the Film Curves folder. And uh, then you make sure the 9 P1X files are under the XH1 and the, the 1 VCRV file is under XPro2. If, for example, you want to have, I don't know, a bleach bypass on the XT3, you can see that the P1X files for bleach bypass are already assigned to the XT3. The only thing you need to do is copy and rename the bleach bypass VCRV file of the XT4. You need to rename that to the XT3 and then put it in the film curves folder. At this point, you will have bleach bypass on the XT3 and it works pretty much like that for all the, the cameras. So at this point, you're pretty much done. Uh, you can close the folder, open up Capture One, and you should have access to the desired film simulation in the base characteristics tab. And yeah, enjoy. Now for Mac users, uh, the way to find the, um, the folders is a bit different, but essentially the whole process is the same. So you'll have to find the um, Capture One app in, in your applications and you will have to click um, show package contents and then uh, contents and then you will have to find the, the directory which contains the, the film curves and uh, you will have to do the same process as I described for the Windows OS. Now, the second way to go about this, if you have a camera equipped with an X-Trans 1 or an X-Trans 2 sensor, or if you have a newer camera model that is not supported yet by Capture One or is uh, not supported at all by your Capture One perpetual license, is to modify the EXIF data of the files you wish to process in Capture One so that it recognizes the camera that took the pictures as a supported camera which has access to the newer film simulations. So let's take again the example of the X-Pro2 which we used in the previous part. So what you will need is pretty much uh, one program next to uh, Capture One to edit the EXIF data of the files. That program is called EXIF Tool. It's a free command-based editor available for uh, Windows and Mac. And um, what you will need, if you don't want to work uh, with uh, command lines, is a GUI uh, user interface. Now, the one we'll be using is called EXIF Tool GUI. It's solely for Windows. Mac users will find a link for similar GUI in the description alongside the links for the EXIF tool program and EXIF tool GUI. Now once you have downloaded both EXIF tool and EXIF tool GUI, place both programs uh, folder somewhere on your PC, just don't put them in program files or windows. At this point, start the XIF tool GUI. You should see the same screen as I do. You will be able to browse to the directory or the folder where um, the images you wish to modify are. I personally like to import all the images into the same folder as uh, the XIF tool GUI folder, but your mileage may vary. At this point, you will see some options on the right, including workspace. What you need to do is click on a workspace and uh, what you will see 
suddenly is the camera model which took the picture then click on model and you will be able to edit the model at the bottom of the window next to large then rename the model you wish capture one to recognize the image taker as so if it's xt4 rename the xpro2 to xt4 tap enter click save and you're good to go if you wish to edit a great number of files, what you need to do is click on the last file of the list and then shift click on the first file. Everything will be selected. And then the only thing you need to do is rename the camera on one of the files, click save, and then the change will be applied to all the files. Now you're pretty much done. The only thing you need to do is to import the files into Capture One. It should be recognized as the new camera uh, model you entered and uh, you should have access to all the film simulations. One last note, you should know Recently, Fujifilm has uh, modified the look of certain of its film simulations, uh, namely Provia and Astia. I'm not sure if Velvia, but maybe too. And uh, Capture One has done the same. So if you're modifying the EXIF data of uh, an X, uh, Pro 2 so an X-Trans 3 sensor camera, to an X-T4, so it has the newest iteration of Provia. Provia will not look the same in the raw converter in Capture One as uh, does the Provia when the EXIF is not modified. There's nothing going on, it's just that you are seeing the X-T4 Provia profile. If you will be doing multiple edits uh, on the same file and you're not sure what version of Provia or STI you will like, what I recommend is to um, have one Xtrans 3 version of the file and one Xtrans 4 version of the file imported into Capture One so you can compare both and have access simultaneously to the newer film simulations and also the older versions of Provia and Astia. Also one important thing you need to know if you'll be comparing files taken with a native Fuji lens I recommend to change the lens profile in the lens tab from the Capture One profile to the manufacturer profile. If you wish uh, your exported JPEGs to have the correct EXIF simply use the same process but backwards and uh, rename uh, the camera model in the model tab with uh, your original camera's name. Okay, so Adobe Lightroom. Now there are basically two ways to get access to film simulations in Lightroom. The first way, which has gotten some attention lately, uh, consists of going into the Lightroom directory and uh, modifying some files so that some film simulations such as Classic Negative and Bleach Bypass are not exclusive anymore to the uh, newer camera models such as the X-T4, X-Pro3 or X-100V. The shortcoming of this technique is that it does not give access to all of the film simulations because some older camera models which have the X-Trans 1 or X-Trans 2 sensor do not have access to some film simulations which are accessible to the X-Trans 3 and X-Trans 4 sensor cameras such as A-Cross or Returna. So if you want to have those film simulations, this technique will not give you access to those. It will only give you access to Classic Negative and uh, Bleach Bypass and CPR, I think. Now what you will have to do is that you will have to find a folder which contains the Lightroom files which restrict the Classic Negative and Bleach Bypass film simulations. So there are paths on the screen. Uh, you can try either one of them and you should find the folder. Once you're in it, you will see a number of files, uh, XPRO3 files, GFX100, XT4 files. If you have an X-mount APS-C uh, camera, pick either the X-T4 or X-Pro3, open the notepad in administrator mode and open the file, the XMP file for classic negative or bleach bypass, depending on what uh, film simulation you want in the notepad. At this point, you will have to find the camera mode restriction line. You will see uh, a camera model written between the quotes. What you need to do if you want to have uh, all your cameras to have access to this particular film simulation is to erase the camera model, which is between the quotes, leave the quotes and then save the the file. At this point uh, simply start up Lightroom and you should have the film simulation available to you in Lightroom.
Now, as I said earlier, the problem with this procedure is that uh, you only have access to classic negative bleach bypass and CPO files. So if you have an older uh, camera model with an X-Trans 1 or an X-Trans 2 sensor or a Bayer sensor, the list of which is on the screen right now, you won't uh, be able to access Acros, Eterna or the Acros green, red and uh, yellow uh, film simulations uh, using this technique, this approach to access all of the 18 uh, film simulation Fuji has engineered, uh, you will have to use another approach which uh, consists of editing the active data of the pictures that you wish to process in Lightroom. For those of you who are using Lightroom, you are probably very well acquainted with a program called Iridian X Transformer. And for those who are not acquainted, uh, well, the Fuji X Trans sensor uses a special type of uh, array which can cause some issues when processing the raw files, and there can be a sort of loss in certain details. And what this uh, program does is it converts the raw files into uh, DNG files and um, in a way which uh, retains uh, the maximum amount of details and it's a plugin or it can be used as a plugin for Lightroom and um, the thing is it has a function which allows you to rename your camera model to a more recent camera model which has access to the newer film simulations so that when you load the images into Lightroom you will um, have access to those new film simulations because Lightroom will believe that the camera which took the pictures was one of those uh, newer cameras which has access to the film simulations. To do that, you actually have to um, download by Iridient. Uh, you can uh, try it as a demo, but it uh, puts red stripes on your uh, file if you use it as a demo. So it's not very much usable like that. But anyways, when you open the program, you should see the same screen as above. Go into DNG options and then you should see overwrite model. Click that and uh, simply write the camera model. You want the original camera model to be overridden by and then simply select the images you want to convert and Iridin will convert them into DNG and then you will be able to import them into Lightroom and uh, process them as you wish. If you will be importing files into Lightroom which have been already imported under the same name, even if uh, under another extension, make sure you rename your files otherwise uh, Lightroom will not be able to import them. Um, the Mac uh, procedure should be the same, so there's not much uh, details to add there. Now, Iridin X Transformer is a paid program. Um, in my opinion, it's a, a good purchase if you're a Lightroom user, because it's not only an EXIF uh, editor, it's mainly a raw converter. Its uh, main purpose is to convert Fujita files into uh, DNG files, and in doing so, it retains a maximum amount of details and has been documented th that it does a better job in this respect than Adobe. Now, the other reason why I'm recommending this program is because there's really no other way for um, users, uh, for photographers who have uh, the X-Trans 1 or X-Trans 2 uh, sensor equipped cameras or uh, Bayer sensor equipped cameras. Because if you modify the EXIF, the camera model name, in another, for example, free program, what happens is that Lightroom does not recognize the file, uh, if it's a RAW, uh, even if it's a DNG. So the only program who's able, who's compatible with Lightroom in this respect is um, Iridian X Transformer. Um, now, photographers who have the X Trans 1 and X Trans 2 cameras can download a free version of um, Capture One Express and uh, following the guide in the Capture One part of this video can access Classic Negative and Bleach Bypass and other film simulations and they can then export the files into TIFF and 
import them into Lightroom if they have the space on the hard drive because the TIFF files are pretty big. Now, um, photographers who have the Bayer sensor camera, so the XT100, XT200 or the XA series can only use Lightroom because uh, there's no way to, to access film simulations for the Bayer sensor equipped Fuji cameras in Capture One. So I pretty much covered everything I had to in this guide. Uh, if you have any uh, suggestions or comments please do so uh, in the comment section i appreciate you taking the time uh, to watch this and hopefully you will enjoy your new uh, film simulations